everybody. Anne Marie to Forager Chick here. Today I wanted to do a little bit of a fire demonstration. This is really practice for me, but I wanted to do it for you too. If you watched my one that I did last year, you can find that link right up here. Um, it was pretty bad. <laughs> It took me a really long time just to get my fire, my tinder bundle um, lit and my fire started. So um, we have to practice these things, these skills that we learn. You know, you may learn something once a year, twice a year. If you don't practice them periodically throughout the year as much as you can, well, then it's hard to actually achieve the goal of, of doing what you intended to do. So you know that old saying, do something a hundred times and then you pretty much got it. Well, um, that's it, that's true. So I learned to make fire the first time, I think it's about four years ago. I can't quite remember. Uh, my friend Denise and I, the other forager chick, we went to a war woman weekend in the middle of January. It was freezing cold, but it was my first experience pretty much with anything survival. So we learned how to make a fire using a ferro rod, using flint and steel, um, using a fire saw, which is made out of bamboo, and using a bow drill. It was pretty amazing to say the least that when we made our fire for the first time without just lighting a match, but you should always have matches or a lighter anyway, um, it was like game changer to know that you could actually make fire. So since then, it took me probably another year to even do it again, which is crazy because I forgot everything that I learned. So, and then it went down to a few times a year. And then this year already, I, it's January, end of January, I've done it three times. So it's pretty exciting. I want to practice this as much as possible. So I want to show you what I do and hopefully it can help somebody else. And um, I do want to say, I think what, what helped me a lot is learning from Survival Sherpa, Todd. He's a great guy. You can find his videos on here too on YouTube. And he really like laid everything out and made sense of of each thing and it kind of helped and then i went on and i learned more from fuel the fires <sighs> game changer we had an entire weekend of just fire it was totally amazing and then um yesterday just yesterday i went to george bush crafters and i learned uh, a couple of things from jack rule and he was showing us all the different things out in the woods that you could not only use for fire, you can make char cloth from, how to identify the different trees, how to take the bark off certain trees. And so the more you learn, the better you'll get at it. So let me get to it. First of all, I gathered some of this nice dry straw, broom's edge, um, and we haven't had rain in a while, so today should be fairly easy. Last year it was in the rain. So I gathered some of this, and you can hear it. It's quite crunchy. So I have some of that. I have some leaves, some bark. Um, I did find some, some usnea that was dried, which is a lichen. So I thought I'd put that in my bundle as well. And I'm doing this on a rock, and the rock is quite a little bit damp still, but I have this bark off a tree that's so bone dry. You know, we had so much wind the last week, and, and all this stuff has fallen down. So I'm going to use that as my base for my tinder bundle. I'm going to get a little more comfortable here. I'm going to start by just breaking this down a little bit. And... I think your tinder bundle is probably your most important part of making fire. Last year when I tried this, I had barely any materials. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> but again, practice makes perfect. Although not perfect, none of us are perfect. But it does make you a little better each time you do it. I'm gonna take some of that. I'm gonna weave in some of these crunchy leaves that came from the canna lilies. I'm kind of making it into a bird's nest, weaving things in and around. You don't want to just like light this whole thing right here. You might have chaos then. 
And if I need it, I will use some fat lighter. And fat lighter comes from the pine trees, like the dead pine trees. I'm not exactly sure how to explain the fat lighter. I know somebody on here will probably comment, give me a better description. But you can find some dead pine trees around standing up. And we found this yesterday right here. And we chopped these pieces off and gosh, it smells so good. So this will last a long time. You don't burn this whole block. You just shave it off and get a little bit of shavings and feathers and you put that in there. So we'll use that if we have to. And I also have some jute twine. This is just a little teeny tiny piece of twine and you can use any natural cordage in your tinder bundle and you just kind of pull it apart the more surface area that you have the better so we just pull it apart get it all nice and fluffy <laughs> levi's back here hanging out he's always with me last time i tried doing this about a week ago I thought I had it perfect, whole video was great, I go back and look at the camera, it shut off. I don't know if the dog walked past it, the wind blew, or what. So I'm going to show that at the end <laughs> in the bloopers, because I had a couple of choice words that went on there, so, but I'm trying to get that all fluffed up, I think it'll take it a little bit longer. So we're just going to put that in there, squish them in. I'm not done yet. I'm going to add more stuff. Because even though it looks like it's big enough, I don't believe it. I think that's my main problem. I don't put enough stuff in my tinder bundle. Where'd that loosening go? I'm going to put the loosening in there. had some dried uh, goldenrod, so I'm putting that in there. Could have been goldenrod. Might have been dog fennel. We had both of them. Just... Kind of hard to tell when it looks like that. Save that stick for later. Gosh, I'm covered in it too. All right, push that in there a little bit more. You want a clean area to work in. You don't want to set yourself on fire. Put that right there. Let's see what else I got in here. I got some dried bark. Might have come off a of poplar. Um, beach, not sure. I'm going to put that in there too. Wind it in. Wrap it around. I got got some of this dried punky wood. I think that's what Mr. Jack called it yesterday. Punk wood. And here's an old mushroom. Turkey tail. All dried up. Alright. I think I'm going to go with that. Okay. And then before I light it, I want to show you what I have over here. Over here, I have all my wood ready to go. So once this is lit and it's going good, I'll start throwing on some of those teeny weeny tiny twigs that I found in a crunchy. Hear that? So they're nice and crunchy and they snap. I'll start with all of those and then we'll move up to a thicker size like this. Then even thicker pencil size and maybe up to this size. This is a small demonstration fire, not for me keeping warm. So I'm not going to put too much wood on there or else it's going to take me longer to put it out. Also I have some old bark. We could stick that in there. So when Mr. Todd taught us from Survival Sherpa, he talked about breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So your breakfast is all the little bitty stuff that starts your fire, like you would start your day with your fuel, that's your fuel. And then your lunch 
is the bigger pieces. And then finally, your dinner is the really big pieces, the really big pieces. So um, that's a good way to remember it. So today, I'm going to start it with my knife and a ferro rod, which we got right here. I'm going to take my ferro rod. I love this one. It's nice and thick and it's just easy to hold in your hand. It's a uh, Uber Herbal Ben? Herbal, Herbal Ben. I'm sorry, I know I'm botching that name really bad. But I love this one and I'll put a link in the comments to it. And if you'd like to get it, um, you can do so. And then I have my Mora knife here. So this has been a good handy little more knife, companion knife, and somebody put on a nice 90 degree angle on the back for me, and I'm about to have a new knife, which I can't wait to show y'all when it gets finished, someone's making it for me. So I'm going to take the back of the knife, and here we go, wish me luck. I'm pretty excited, y'all. You have no idea. You have no idea. That's never happened that fast. I am super stoked. I'm just going to put the smaller pieces on there. Ooh, the wind's blowing a little bit. Might get a little bit more of this grass if I need it. Fastest fire I ever did. So I'm very excited. Just keep putting your little pieces around. There's no set way of doing it. Just be random about it if you wish. That's pretty wet. Woo. I don't even think we need that. We might save that stuff for later get my knife out of the way. I was so excited. Should always put the knife away. Ugh. Ah! Sorry, I know I'm goofy. Totally excited. Well, maybe I will stay out here for a while now. Keep warm. What you think, Lee? That sound good? So yeah, basically all you would do is just keep adding your pieces in random order and if we did need this for uh, a fire to boil water or to keep warm we would do it in a little bit of bigger area and you would add larger pieces than what I'm doing. Wind's blowing a little bit so I'm not going to add any more on there. I am right next to my creek so that's pretty cool but I don't want to set the woods on fire. Sorry, get excited about these things. Well, I hope you like this video. And if you did, please like, hit the like down below. And I would love to have you subscribe to our channel and share with your friends. Thank you and have a beautiful day. Bye now. No. I lost the whole thing. What the flying fuck? Sorry, you hear me cursing on there because I just lost my fire. I lost my video. And I'll just have to do it again. Well, so I lost my video of starting the fire. That's pretty depressing. <laughs> I thought I had it, but there it is, my little fire. I'll put it out now. I'll do another one and show everybody. But I started it with the ferro rod. 
Hmm. All right. Have a good day, y'all.